My name is Nipsey Hussle, and we on my grandmother's porch. I think the definition of fatherhood is the consistency of being a father figure in, um, in your child's life. And I think the definition of being a man, that's a long one, but I think what it boiled down to is just um, being thorough. And um, you know, I read in the Bible that Women and children can be careless, you know what I mean? Men can't be careless. So I think being thorough and um, whatever the opposite of carelessness is, define what being a man is at the, at the core. Honey, Ma, bring your car this way. Huh? Bring your car over here. Not car. Your motorcycle. Oh, man, I, I love my pops. I, was, I used to cry when he dropped me off back here, actually, at this house. Cause he used to come get us when he could. We didn't live in the same house, but um, you know, my pops was always energetic, always had a positive aura, always had a good vibe, always smiling, always lit up a room when he walked in. People always loved my pops. You know, he was just a good energy person and always like, you know, happy and just, you know, at a good place in his life. And so um, regardless of Whatever financial state he was in, he was just always a good vibe, you know, because he didn't been up and down and up again, you know what I mean? But I just think that um, my memories of being with my pops was always good memories. He'd cook for us, take us to the movies, clown, watch movies. We was movie buffs, all of us. So he'd just put us on the movies and, you know what I mean, joke with us, clown with us, be a kid with us, you know what I mean? But we was close, though, always. You know, we never lived in the same house. You know, as far as I can remember, my mom and him were separated, but I always had a high respect and a, and a you know, a genuine love for my pops, because, you know what I mean? He put his best foot forward. All right, let's get it. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, you want to go slow or you want to go fast? I'm going fast. All right, look at him. You ready? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to be around a lot of different type of individuals to call my friends. So some of them had, you know, parents. But um, majority of the kids in my area that I grew up around, more didn't than did, you know? And um, more definitely didn't have they, they pops in the house, you know what I'm saying, than did. But I, I had some close friends that, that did have a father in the house. You know, that's why I said I had different, like, groups of people that I would consider my close friends that I grew up with. And, um, you know, a couple of my close homies did have good male role models, but the majority of the people I knew didn't, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, that's what it was. That was good. Yeah. No, I'm racing. No, 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 fresh. Yeah. I'm racing. No. Nah. Hey. Um, I think family is way higher on the list of things that are important in terms of a retreat compared to America. I think that out there, family is the equivalent of how we feel about material things out here. Like that's what drives our culture. That's what drives our whole philosophy is material gain, you know? And I feel like out there, what drives their whole culture is family family well-being and family togetherness, you know? And uh, that's really the main difference, just the, the value system, what's important, you know? And you would think that the country that has less would feel like getting things is more important, but it's actually different, you know? It's just what's valuable. We got two different ideas of what that is, you know what I mean? And out there, family is very, very high on the list of valuable things, you know? 
My daughter's name is Imani Dior. She four. And her her name means beautiful faith in Swahili. You know, but um I chose Imani for a few reasons. You know, I named my daughter, I was actually, you know, um incarcerated for a short time my when my when my child's mother was pregnant with my daughter and I came up with her name, you know, when I was in jail. And I was just thinking about a lot, you know what I mean? And um I felt like faith represented where I was at, you know what I mean? At that time I had just got a record deal, I was in jail. I didn't know if I was gonna get out and I had a child on the way. So I just, you know, it was a lot on my mind and I think that faith represented where I was at, you know what I'm saying? And it was beautiful because I ended up getting out of that situation and moving forward, you know, but um other than that, I just like how it sounds. My name start with an E also, so you know. When I first became aware that I was having a child, I was excited, a little bit worried. Um, you know, me and her mom were together, so that was definitely heavy on my mind. But um, we decided to have had a child and move forward with it. We found out we were having a little girl. And at that point, I felt like my job was even bigger. Just because um, both raising a little boy and a girl is a challenge. I would assume, I don't have a son, but I would assume so. But just a, a, a little girl, I don't have the experience of being a little girl. I don't have the experience of being a, a woman to give her that, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit different, you know? More of a challenge, I think, more of an unknown situation in front of you. But I was definitely excited and, uh, you know, what I've come to learn is that you find out as you go. You know, you learn as you go. <laughs> My life did a complete perspective change. Because now, you are accountable. You know what I mean? You're accountable for the well-being of something outside of yourself. You know what I mean? And this is a person. Things can happen that you cannot fix. You can't take back. You have to you have to seriously protect your kid from certain things. So my whole priorities, perspective, agenda flip-flopped a little bit. I won't say that my, who I am and, and what I've done and what I do took a 180 degree turn, but my priorities and my perspective definitely did. And, you know, um, the decisions I make, the process now, there's, there's another element, there's another factor in my decision making process. And that's my daughter's well being. And uh, so it was definitely a paradigm shift, you know, in, in the way I think. walk, seeing her talk, seeing her going out of town for a month on tour, coming back, she's taller. Seeing her learn how to read, identify ideas, grasp concepts, seeing her brain develop, seeing her intelligence and her curiosity expand. Seeing her catch on to things, you know, seeing her develop determination. You know what I mean? This is all stuff that'll trip you out when you're watching a person that you created, you know what I mean, experience life and take to the things that everybody takes to, but you, you trip when you're looking at your kid do it because you've seen every process and every step. And, uh, you know, sometimes she hit me with words. I heard a song she made the other day, you know what I'm saying? She's singing now, so I heard her sing, and she's four. You know, just her development in general, every time she, you know, evolve a little bit. I see it and it, it trips me out. Now, pictures again. I'm holding your hand. Pick it up. Again, again. again. Well, when, when a father isn't present, the social consequence is you have an unstable person in society. The personal consequence is 
you have an unstable element in your family. And that's your relationship between you and your child. And it's, you know, it's hard to build off of that. And that's, that's unhealthy in my opinion. And so, um, we know what happens. People get out here. The statistics can tell you better than, better than I can tell you, you know, about the social cons consequences. But I do know that kids that don't have their parents, you know, at certain levels are off balance. At certain levels are, you know, unfulfilled. You know what I mean? So I think that it's definitely a reflection of broken homes, what we see going on in society. You know what I mean? A reflection of households and people that are off balance when you see these crazy things happening in the world. You know? And uh, personal effect, you know, I'm sure the old guys that laid on their deathbed can tell you how that felt. You know what I mean? Knowing that they didn't have no relationship with their kids. You know? I think that you come to look at your life at a certain point. And you got to be comfortable with what you see. You know what I mean? The facades wear off and everything comes to the surface. And it's just who you really are. And you finally probably can see it. And I think that it's hard to look at if it's not something that you're proud of. And that's one of the things that definitely, in them, in them lonely hours, in them old ages, you know, I think eat at people that they didn't have relationships with their kids and they didn't show up, especially men for their for they kids, you know? Man, I got a whole notebook of things I just write down as I, as I read them, things I, I hear people say, wisdom that I just pick up in the world. I've been writing them down, so I'm going to give her that. But I'm also, I would like her to just understand more than anything that she has to be fearless and understand to look the world in its eyes, you know what I mean, and stand up and be proud. And if it was anything I would tell her, is that, you know what I mean? So don't be afraid.